Good morning. You're here in uh, in MGM Hospital. Today we're going to uh, show a Rotor Pro case. There's been a number of Rotor Pro launched uh, in the country uh, in the last couple of days. Uh, a few very good centers in um, Delhi have done and uh, Hyderabad. Uh, in Chennai, we have uh, launched two, uh, but today everybody's question is, how does Rotapro really help patients? Uh, because it's the same bird, it's the same treatment, it's the same outcome, which is absolutely true. Uh, but that's what we're going to find out today. How is it going to make a difference to uh, the therapy? How is it going to make a difference to patients? Today we're going to demonstrate a single operator Rotapro how uh, you can actually do a rotablation single operator. You don't need uh, a double operator, which has been there for some time, but we're going to demonstrate today. Why do you need Rotor Pro? Uh, the answer to that is uh, the therapy, even though it's uh, very uh, efficient, time tested for decades. Rotor Pro, nothing replaces Rotor, Rotor ablation, nothing debulks as well as Rotor, at least for our country because we don't have other technologies. Uh, in spite of having various other technologies such as IVL, uh, laser, uh, opium, nothing yet replaces uh, rotablation. That's a uh, period and uh, that's a fact. Uh, the question uh, that we meant to answer today, why do we need Rotapro and how does it really help? In spite of the efficacy for a country like India, as big as India, we do more angioplasties than many countries, the penetration of rotablation is only about uh, 3 percent, hardly. And that doesn't sound right because traditionally, uh, for whatever reason, rotablation has been projected as a, uh, as a very complex procedure and it is uh, very time consuming and it has been projected as a two-man job. Now that's where exactly the R&D for Rotapro has gone into, which is to make it easy, make it intuitive and perhaps make it a single operator procedure. As a result, more younger people will be able to adopt it and that's how we're going to treat more patients. So therefore, if it's an effective treatment, if it doesn't reach more than 3% for angioplasties, we're not really doing great. And that's where the R&D has gone into, which is to make the procedure easier, intuitive, less knobs, less kit, and allow the, uh, the young cardiologist to take on with ease. And that's what we're going to demonstrate today, is uh, how we can do a single operator rotablation uh, with the Rotor Pro systems, it was done even with the previous uh, rotor consoles, but then it's become more easier. There is no pedals, and that's what we're going to demonstrate today. 55-year-old uh, lady today, um, she has uh, uh, presented with uh, an NSTEMI with uh, ECG changes showing inferior lead repolarization abnormality. Her troponin was positive. She subsequently had an angiogram uh, which showed a severely calcific uh, right coronary artery, you can actually see the right coronary artery without any dye, it's that calcific and there was a discrete area of severe narrowing which was uh, proven undilatable and, uh, and it was uh, very rightly um, referred for uh, rotablation by the uh, index team. So we'll show you the angiogram today, so uh, let's play the angiogram. So I hope you can appreciate here, even before the dye goes, it looks as though this entire vessel is stented. But I can assure you this patient has not had any previous uh, coronary uh, instrumentation. Uh, this is all calcium uh, and you can see there is a discrete narrowing in the mid uh, right coronary artery just after the RV branch uh, and the rest of the vessel is largely faultless. Uh, so we decided to do an IVUS. So this is the IVUS run. You can see here this is a, a circumferentially calcified vessel but the MLA is here. Uh, so I think we will end up landing in the calcium, it is about 2.75 to 3 vessel. This is the tightest part uh, and then uh, coming to the uh, proximal vessel, again circumferential calcium, uh, stop. So it clearly suggests the uh, narrowing is a very discrete portion, show us the tightest part please. 
uh, and before the narrowing and after the narrowing it is calcium. Uh, so, this is the tightest part uh, most likely the end stemi originated from here. Uh, you can see here this Ivis characteristics is typical of dense calcium. Uh, this white bit shielding ultrasound waves anywhere beyond it is suggestive of dense calcium. Uh, I cannot see anything I just can see something towards the 10 o'clock position where ultrasound manages to get through and perhaps around 4 o'clock everywhere else is very tight uh, which is why probably it was undilatable. So, today we are going to use a, a rotablation for this to uh, debulk this and uh, being able to expand our stent. So, the burst size uh, I am going to go with a 1.75 uh, because anything smaller I do not think will be productive. You could take a 2, uh, but uh, I am going to go with a 1.75 and if needed we will always take a 2. Uh, so, in preparation for that uh, we have a 7 French uh, axis from the right femoral artery, we have a 6 French axis from the left femoral vein. Uh, we have put a prophylactic temporary pacing wire, balloon tipped wire from the left femoral vein to the RV apex and we have taken a, a 7 French uh, JR 3.5 guide. We have exchanged the uh, standard angioplasty wire to a rotor floppy wire and we are ready to go with the rotor pro system. So, we will go with the rotor pro. So, this is the uh, rotor link plus, this is the new rotor link plus for the Rota Pro system, it is a 1.75. The packaging is fairly standard, but the cable is slightly different. Uh, there are several ways to take it out, but the best way to take it out is just do this, everything will come out. So, here you have the entire cable system, which is now uh, been consolidated into one tough cable. Previously, you would have the um, fiber optic, then we will have the gas cable, everything as separate cables. Now, it is all into one, which is very handy. Otherwise, the rest of the system is fairly standard in terms of the burr. Coming to the actual uh, advancer, uh, there are some changes I hope you can uh, appreciate here. This knob which previously you can actually rotate and take it off completely, you cannot do that anymore. It is uh, a completely uh, 180 degrees and that is it, it stops. You cannot take out this knob and you can uh, tighten it. So, you can either advance it or come back and tighten it, that is it. The on off switch is here, this blue is the on off switch, you can switch on and switch off. So, that is as simple as that, no more legs. There is a dyna mode here, when you press the dyna mode you get a green button which means dyna is enabled. If you say you just want a short burst of dyna, you can also use this button here on the far end of your hands which is just a momentary dyna which you can use here. And of course, the brake defeat is same as before and uh, the axis for the wire is the same as before and the burr on, uh, on, the, uh, on the leading edge is exactly the same as before, uh, nothing different. So, we will get on with the case. Okay, so uh, we have taken the uh, 1.75 uh, Rota Pro link and uh, this is the uh, advancer. You can see here I have just arranged everything in such a way where I have the guide on my left hand side, I have the advancer on my right hand side. I have curled the rotor wire here, I do not know if you can appreciate that and I have left my rotor actual cable curled nicely in a large circle so that everything is accessible to me, I do not need a second operator to advance this. So, what we are going to do is now just uh, advance the whole uh, thing, but before that you want to make sure it is going to work and just to demonstrate here as I told you we have the diner button here, when you switch it on this becomes green, uh, green and if that is the case when you press this you will get diner just about uh, 60, 70 thousand. Uh, so, when I press the uh, diner activate you are going to get it uh, at a low speed just to allow advancing and removing of the uh, burr. Uh, when you do not want dyna, you switch off like how you would stick on the pedal and then when you go on to go with full rotor, uh, here it is at uh, 160, uh, 160 is standard, it kicks off at 160,000 uh, rpm and then you can switch off. So, I can see the drip all is well, so we can get on and do it. So, we will advance the wire as you would uh, normally uh, for uh, perhaps uh, uh, operators who have been doing rotor for some time you will feel a withdrawal of no foot pedal uh, which is something I am getting used to also I think everybody will have to get used to it, but it is very intuitive for the new user 
because it's uh, very easy. There's one less thing to worry about, which is the foot pedal. So I'm just waiting to see the wire exit through the opposite side. Again, you can see I have not moved and uh, nobody else have moved here uh, either. So the wire has come out here, the ACT322. So everything is left here, so we don't need to do anything. So you can see here on the other side, the wire has come out as standard. So all I'm going to do is, uh, is you uh, clip it on to your wire clipper and then you will defeat the brake that you would normally do. Yeah, so I think that makes sense. What you would normally do is what I have done here. I've just defeated the brake using the wire clipper, which means as we advance, uh, this wire is going to come out. I hope you can see here that this is uh, coming out nicely. Now, next thing I'm going to do is there's two ways of doing it. One is uh, you can go on Dyna uh, or you can just advance it looking at the fluoro. I'm constantly looking at the fluoro, making sure the wire position does not move as I advance. If the wire also advances as I advance the burr, then I'm going to control the wire by holding it here uh, or pulling it from here, one or the other. Yeah. So my O-ring is open, so I'm just advancing it. And you can see here, as I advance, my wire is coming out here. So uh, you don't need another person here. If you want, you can activate the DynaGlide if you're too worried. If you're not, uh, you just have to advance it. And here, uh, I'm going to stop here. You can see my wire is slightly advancing. I don't want my wire to advance. If that's the case, I'm going to do this. So you can see here, look at my hands. I have my right hand on the wire, my left hand on the uh, actual burn so I'm going to do two things so so this is how you advance so my o-ring is open and I am pushing the uh, uh, rotor with my left hand and pulling the wire with my right hand which means my wire there is absolutely static and uh, it will do the job so I hope you can appreciate here So that is single operator rotor advancement uh, going fairly as expected. So uh, here there's a little bit of resistance which sometimes you get as the burr is very close to the bend of the catheter. That's okay. You just have to activate Dyna and there you go. Okay. And there you go. You're out now. So uh, I hope you uh, saw that. So now I have uh, activated my brake. I don't need the wire to be curled next to me and I'm going to clip on my wire clipper onto the wire. Good. So we can switch off uh, Dyna. So we're all set to go now. So you can see here I've advanced the entire rotor system up to the coronary with just a single operator. You didn't even need a, a second operator or a nurse, anyone. But if you have it, it's fine, well and good. But if it doesn't have, it doesn't mean that you can't do rotor. You can do rotor. It's fairly straightforward. So we'll get on with uh, the actual job. Okay. So everything is set. 160 is fine. So we'll get on. So now the wire has been uh, clipped. My brake is on. So the wire isn't going to move. I'm just checking there on fluoro that everything is in position and we're just going to advance the burr forward. So here we go. So that's the point where we want to treat with a little bit of uh, deceleration here. There you go. There you go. I just went through. I hope you just saw that. I'm just giving a few polishing runs and we're done. So we're just going to do a safety check now. Uh, you can see here it was good we put the pacing on we have pacing on now uh, this is an advantage of course uh, one could argue you can also get away but it's safer to put the pacing wire especially with the with a right coronary uh, rotablation so i've just done a safety shot i'm happy everything is okay perhaps we'll just do one uh, polishing run for what it's worth and then we're out
so that's actually very very easy now because I don't have to get my legs one leg here one leg there that's not there it's just a button right here it goes on as soon as switch it on as soon as switch it off it goes away so fairly straightforward so now we're going to take it out now this is another important bit where traditionally uh, one would say you need two operators but we could do this uh, with just a single operator so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take away my uh, clip I'm going to defeat the brake and to defeat the brake uh, the usual standard technique clip it on to the end of the wire and we just stick it in so now I want you to concentrate here what we're going to do to defeat the brake so I'm going to keep my o-ring open and uh, as we pull the whole thing off and I'm going to activate Dyna so my Dyna is on the green button is on my o-ring is open so, constantly looking at it, I'm just going to, I'm just going to take it out of my, pull it out into the guide and once into the guide, just keep looking at my burr as it comes out, you can see I'm just pushing here and the whole burr comes out, I've got my o-ring open, as soon as it comes out you will get to see it and I've not moved from my place. So the o-ring is closed. So you just saw I have not moved out of my place, I am in the same place, no second operator, the wire is exactly in the same place. All I did was defeat the brake, go on Dynaglide, keep pushing a very fast continuous movement, the uh, cable, the rotor cable will automatically circle on itself and now we are out. So now we are going to take everything out, the wire is, uh, is still clipped on, we want the brake to be defeated. Okay, now the uh, rotor link plus is completely out, my wire is still there, I am going to have a look if I am happy, if I need to exchange or whether I can just take it out and put another wire, we will know. That looks good, so uh, I do not need my wire anymore, so my rotor wire is out. So I think uh, that pretty much finishes the rotor exercise single uh, operator, uh, it is nothing new, uh, it has been there for some time but except with the new rotor pro which was the point of today's exercise, uh, we can demonstrate that it can be done with ease with a single operator and uh, the uh, console is more intuitive now, there is one less kit for you to deal with. So single operator becomes easier and therefore it is likely to reach more people and therefore more patients can benefit with the same outcomes of rotablation as before that was all about the R&D of uh, Boston and uh, thanks to them, thank you.